people have tended to drift away okay. from that very important aspect of feeding our newborns and therefore ensuring their survival. As you rightly mentioned, um, many people, many young people may have ill or misgivings about breastfeeding. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yet, in the advanced world, people are moving back towards breastfeeding, breastfeeding as our people move towards other feeding modalities. So it was pertinent for the World Health Organization to designate and mm. call everyone to this important aspect that hinges on the survival of humanity. When we have uh, healthy babies who are fed well and they grow well into um, healthy children and, and therefore adults, mm -hmm. then we are assured of continuity as a human race. Wow. This is one very important aspect mm -hmm. which we should draw our attention to. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Well, to take you back still on the events that aspired during uh, the first and between the first and the seventh of August, we just like Doctor said, the World Health Organization came out and they picked this topic of step up for breast, like step up. I mean, it's a call calling each and every individual to step up for breastfeeding and then they mentioned something that uh, seeking to involve the government the communities and individuals so the theme was aiming at raising awareness about the sustainable breastfeeding environment and in my mind i was like why step up for this but well just like you're asking yourself right about now, let's go into details of why it was so mandatory for the WHO to come out and then they want each one of us to stand up or to step up for this particular cause of breastfeeding. Dr. Kassiria, we've seen or we expect that each and every mother, Azalo Mwana, from day one, Aba Manye Chokola. Yes, I think society, that's how it perceives it. Though we believe that there are mothers that may be from experience, as but then there are those that have not gotten the exposure to know that I'm not doing it right, and then they are thinking they are doing the right thing. And at the end of the day, we are you are specialists, as uh, in your specialties, you can tell and be like, well, it's because on a man at or something is lacking here. So we want to understand the different things about breastfeeding or mama I know when when they when should they start breastfeeding because those are the questions <laughs> how do I get to know that I'm effectively breastfeeding the baby thank you very much um, just before delving into that last component of effective breastfeeding, um, as you know, the girl child um, has grown out of being in the kitchen, in the backyard, mm. into meaningful employment. Many um, empowerment uh, drives have has really caused this. Mm. And also the dynamics of the economy, economies at family level have demanded that our mothers come out of the home mm -hmm. to fend for the family, to top up on what the father earns for the family. As a result, this aspect of breastfeeding has also been affected. Okay. Schooling and other things, the work environment and all that. And that explains the drive towards stepping up, ensuring that this good aspect that borders on survival of humanity is carried on even with the complex the dynamics of today's world mm -hmm. so it is not true that um, every lady who gives birth to a child knows how to breastfeed <laughs> <laughs> that's what we think <laughs> um, you know childbirth is a new experience not only to the family to the father but also to the mother Okay. Imagine having this baby for the first time and you it's your baby. Some of the mothers initially even doubt that. Mm. <laughs> and so the planning for the feeding has to start early on. Mm. 
Okay. And that's why we advise, we encourage most um, all mothers to attend antenatal care in um, a, a professional setting, hospital setting, and where the plan, the birth plan, as well as the feeding is discussed. To bring, to introduce that mm. aspect early enough. Okay? okay? As later on, we shall, as we shall discuss later on, there may be situations whereby breastfeeding may not be effective may not be the optimal um, um, feeding modality okay but we shall discuss that but largely speaking breastfeeding is best and it is introduced as a, as a feeding modality in a natal care and also we encourage mothers to deliver in a qualified setting under a qualified or skilled um, health personnel that's a midwife or doctor and midwife and as such mm. that ensures that uh, they do the necessary um, care for the mother and the baby in the process of delivery mm -hmm. and the immediate time post delivery and what do I mean it's not enough to give birth to a child but the first 24 hours are very important and we consider that as a critical time mm. to ensure that this newborn survives. Mm. And one of the most important component is initiating breastfeeding within the first hour of mm. life. Mm. Okay? So mothers are counseled and supported to initiate breastfeeding. Okay? okay? And for new mothers, we teach them on how to best position themselves and how to attach to ensure that the baby yes. attaches optimally onto the breast, latches on the breast well. Why is it important? Mm. Because if you fail to, 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 to start up the breastfeeding process effectively, mm. you may actually lose out the baby may not the baby mother pair may not um, successfully enjoy or, or apply the breastfeeding as such mm. babies may reject the breast mm. milk, milk may not um, be adequate if they've not established that good relationship early on so we initiate breast we encourage them and support them to initiate breastfeeding in the first hour of life and then we mention what we call proper positioning. In, still in the Sa first hour? Yes, uh, as, a, as part of that. Mm. To support the baby, such as the baby's back is not arched backwards. It's well supported as you hold on the bottom of the baby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You support the baby and the baby lies across your arm. You should be comfortable as a mother. And then you try to introduce the nipple deep into the mouth the whole nipple should be in the mouth the and back. only the black parts the dark parts which is called the alveola mm -hmm. is seen from above but otherwise the greater part of the nipple should be inside mm -hmm. such that when a baby breastfeeds you don't you the the the, the attendant or the attending person mm. should not hear the baby suckle it should be a silent process presses on the breast Okay, and therefore the milk comes in well, and the relationship is started effectively. That is from the first. Yes, from the first hour of life. So, doctor, irrespective of the mother is well or not. So, well, that applies. Um, thank you very much. In situations where the mother has delivered well, and the mother is stable, and the baby is stable, okay. Okay. And that is the first scenario that we are looking at. And, and, and there are no uh, don'ts, do's and don'ts <laughs> with regard to breastfeeding, okay? Okay. So, and then, in the first two hours, you still monitor as a health worker. You oblige to monitor this mother and ensure that she's really keeping the baby on the breast through the first six hours and the first 24 hours. And that's... that's informs us as to why we recommend that all mothers who've just given birth to children, even mm -hmm. if it's uh, normally, should not be discharged 
until after 24 hours. Okay. Part of the observations we are making during that and the interventions is to see whether the child is, has started breastfeeding mm -hmm. early within the first hour and monitor the feeding in addition to the other aspects, the general well-being of the baby, the warmth and others. Thank you so much, Doctor, and then to all our viewers that have just joined in uh, tonight. It is the health show on 11 on Google TV, talking about the effectiveness of breastfeeding in children. Well, we've had a lot of people maybe complain about things. Uh, anyway, finish right with Sekoma Somedo. You know, they're not resonating well and all that. So, well, that's why we like now. We need, we need some help. <laughs> and the help is here now for us to understand why it's very important to effectively breastfeed the baby, yes. With me in the studio, I do have uh, Dr. Cassidia Philip, a pediatrician from Mulago, and also um, as, uh, he's specialized in so many, so many areas, <laughs> which I might not talk about now, but okay. Well, we, we, we would want to understand a lot of things about breastfeeding, just like you said earlier, the first hour and between the 24 hours, it's very important to breastfeed the baby. But well, we've had, during that very week, we've had mothers complain of the challenges that they go through during breastfeeding that or maybe there are some of the reasons as to why some of them be like well i'm done here i'm not breastfeeding the baby i'm opting for other options we want to look at those i don't know whether the doctor is going to allow us <laughs> and tell us about those and how to go about them but we want to look at the challenges that mothers face also during breastfeeding and how they can you know go about them but before we go into that i would remind you that we're streaming live on facebook google Day tv uganda and if you want to be a part of the discussion tonight you can use our whatsapp that is 0788140741 or you can call us on 0200904010 back to dr kasidie let's look at the effectiveness now the signs <laughs> yes before i know uh, people are going to ask me mirundi emeka ida if you never get a bit of water but now let's go into the signs how do i tell that now omwana ali mukuyonka obakati akuseva good um, thank you, Madam Gift. Um, first of all, like I earlier said, early initiation, and once you start it in a proper way, and you educate this mother in doing it the correct way, there, is, there are high chances of having it go on successfully. And some of the signs that the baby is eager to breastfeed, is ready to breastfeed, you see the baby opening the mouth, and when you touch around the, the face, hmm. the child will try to locate, to look around and see whether he or she reaches out for the breast. breast. Okay. That's a sign that this baby is ready to feed. But I appreciate that sometimes there are those babies who are too sleepy, <laughs> <We're not laughs> soon after birth. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what we do, we encourage that uh, at least a newborn should breastfeed between 8 to 12 times a day. Hmm. And therefore, we encourage uh, the mothers and the fathers as well to help stimulate these babies, wake up mm. these babies, mm. and latch them on the breast. Okay? Okay. Because if the baby oversleeps and misses out, you may not be able to, to feed adequately. And that has also risks. The baby may grow weaker when the sugar levels go low. It may hinder this effective interaction between the mother and the child the through the child. breast okay so thereafter it is encouraged that you breastfeed on demand if you can make it more than 12 times a day that's every two hours that is perfect but ideally you shouldn't go below eight times a day which is every after three hours mm. and uh, some of the things that promote effective breastfeeding is, first of all, educating this mother, this new mother, or even experienced mother, mm. on the proper way to do it. Counseling them that breast is best for this newborn. This is a human being 
a child born to you, you are the best person to feed this child because of the enormous benefits. One, it is ever ready, it is safe, it is warm, it is has it boosts the it has the potential to boost the ba baby's immunity, mm -hmm. especially the first milk, which is called colostrum, which is yellow in color and usually in less amounts. When the baby suck, suckles on that, it actually helps to bo to protect the child against infections. Okay. It also has other parameters, sugars, which are called human milk oligosaccharides. They are sugar chains of sugars mm -hmm. that are very important, and you find them in no other feeding substitute other than breast milk. They have antibiotic properties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are also protective against viruses, against bacteria, and they also help to create a very good environment for this baby in terms of the intestine, the stomach and intestines wow. and also help to mature the mm. baby's liver. In other words, the advantages of milk, breast milk to the baby are enormous. Now when you look at the mother's side, if the mother initiates breastfeeding, hormones are released, small um, elements called hormones are released which help the uterus to go back to its normal size. And actually, as mothers start initiated breastfeeding, they feel pain in their tummies. It's because the child is also helping to heal. To the, the child the is helping you to heal. Exactly. Through breastfeeding. Exactly. Okay. The other thing, it's a good family planning method. Okay? And effective and creates yes effective <laughs> especially if done well in the early uh, um, um, a month mm. of life and it also helps on the bonding no mother wants to have this child you've labored all the nine months mm. of carrying this baby and then you have no connection so that important connection is built through breastfeeding mm -hmm. Mm. okay so they are enormous enormous um, and therefore it should be promoted. Okay. Though we appreciate there are some time, some challenges. Challenges are to do with not knowing how to initiate properly. If you don't uh, position and attach the baby well onto the breast, the child might pull on the nipple and cause sores. And of course, when the breast nipple sores, it it causes pain to the mother, and so she will be apprehensive. Okay. okay? Mm. And that might also cause the breast to develop uh, some abscess or pus, okay? An infection, okay? Mm. So that's why it's important to educate, to empower this new mother on how to effectively establish this breastfeeding relationship with the baby. With her baby. There are other challenges, the work that we've talked about. Okay. And that's why um, there's this drive towards creating uh, breastfeeding corners, conducive corners. At the workplaces? Or environment, yeah, at the workplaces. Because we want babies to breastfeed wherever they are, okay? And there are others, but by and large, they hinge around that. Okay. Um Thank you so much, Doctor, and um, I'm just excited. People have started asking questions that are serious. <laughs> but thank you so much. Well, talking about the effectiveness of breastfeeding, I'm going to be going through these questions. Dr. Kaskanyo Zeko Kutunyo Nyola, but we're going to get into these questions and have um, him answer them. But well, we also want to, we, we've talked about, Doctor is trying to explain to us the importance of breastfeeding to the mother, to the child, and also the signs of the effective breastfeeding. But we believe that breastfeeding can be contraindicated in some cases, and we would want to learn about those, yes? Because Dr. Nagamba, she wange. And it has not come to their knowledge that no, it doesn't mean that you have to breastfeed this baby even when you are in this condition. So we would want to understand what are those conditions that don't favor breastfeeding. Thank you very much. Um, 
ideally all babies should be breastfed and the the slogan that um also um followed the breastfeeding week or that was really being um, broadcast is that all babies should initiate breastfeeding should be initiated on to breastfeeding within the first hour of life okay and they should feed exclusively for this first six months of life exclusively breast alone and then they should breastfeed up to two years of age and a hundred percent in other words all babies wow. should be we should have a drive towards having all babies but we we really appreciate that uh, breastfeeding effective breastfeeding happens when the mother is okay mm. as well as the baby there are situations where if the mother is very sick or chronically ill or on, on let's say cancer medications mm. that could be um could cause effects once they are transmitted through the breast milk those are situations whereby you may discuss with the mother and show her the the demerits mm. or why she should not really go on with the breastfeeding, breastfeeding. the other scenario really is not really so correct if the mother has uh, for example hiv okay the feeding plan of feeding for this child is started early on but also she's supported to make an informed this choice okay. but even in the in the in the background of hiv we encourage the mothers to breastfeed in a safe way First of all, all mothers are initiated on antiretroviral therapy to ensure that the risk of transmission to this newborn is minimized. And then they are taught how to breastfeed well. So, Doctor, okay? let, me, let me take you back. Um, all mothers are initiated to antiretroviral drugs. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Isn't it harmful to the baby or they are safer? To the baby exactly if a mother has HIV because in the community that's one other area where where that causes challenges whether they should breastfeed or not, or breastfeed, not. Mm. the advice is that breastfeed still stands out as the best approach even when they're HIV positive yes please the survival of this boy, baby newborn baby is best ensured in the in the environment where the child okay. has breastfed but then they are told how to breastfeed in safely in other words they are initiated on treatment to ensure that the virus is suppressed okay mm. and then they are advised to breastfeed exclusively without giving any other thing for the first six months okay okay and therefore the introduction of other feeds is done around six months, but then we do accelerated uh, weaning with cessation of breastfeeding at around at one year of age, as opposed to the other two, the one the normal one who pushes mm -hmm. up to two years yeah. of age, and then they are also taught or mentored on how to do it effective, how to avoid sowering of the nipple and infection of the breast eh? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how to look out for the wound in the mouth of the child and also this newborn baby is started on treatment that prevents acquisition of this virus so okay. even in the setting of hiv mm. breastfeeding has actually through research come out to be better, better than a child who's not breastfed and actually safe the recent publication from uh, the renowned professors in our setting suggested that even in the background of HIV and breastfeeding the transmission can be less than two percent Wow! which means you are safer feeding but feeding well after being uh, mentored or trained on mm. how to do it safely mm. than not feeding because unbreastfed babies die more and faster from diarrhea related diseases <laughs> and others maybe you can help us <laughs> <laughs>
saying that, your doctor, just help us re echo that. Yes. And breastfed children do what? Yes. And breastfed babies, even in the HIV setting, have a higher risk of contracting diarrhea related infections mm. and therefore higher risk of death. Plus others which we shall discuss in due course. Well, still looking at the contraindications of uh, breastfeeding in children, you can just reach out to us on our Facebook page that is Google TV Uganda and send us a message on WhatsApp. 0788140741 or can be in position to call us on 0200 nine zero four zero one zero in the next less than five minutes i'm going to be receiving your calls as i also go through your whatsapp i've seen uh, some messages already here so i'm going to go through them doctor which other um areas is breastfeeding contraindicated so wha what i want to put across is that they are very limited um situations okay where breastfeeding is 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 not encouraged well and that is if mm. the mother is very sick or okay. is on medicines right. like cancer medicines okay that can be tr um, um pass um that can pass through the breast milk and may have um dangerous Perfect. effects you can imagine the cancer drugs some of mm. them may shed off the hair of the mother mm -hmm. some of them are so strong that they suppress the 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 blood cells the bone marrow mm -hmm. and therefore the blood cells those that cause it, they, they will be important in immunity and others and if this happened to this child it would have dire effects other than those few mm -hmm. scenarios i just want to state that breast is encouraged <laughs> in <laughs> almost all settings <laughs> <laughs> doctor but still on that very point we've had um someone is just asking me what if someone has a condition that is contagious or maybe someone has tb active tb or maybe someone has lysons all over their body or maybe you know those 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 conditions that can breastfeeding still be possible and permitted um we know that yes it, it it's permitted and especially in 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 the case that uh, in the event that the mother has TB, but we start a child on prophylaxis, on medicines that prevent the child from acquiring the TB. But, so, Doctor, in all in all, you're telling us, yes, breastfeeding still stands out. Exactly. And for those who have, for example, maybe um, other, maybe skin condition, like it has been mentioned, mm. we encourage them to express the milk. Of course, while observing hygienic mm, uh, practices, um, practices mm. and therefore feed this child on this express breast milk, which is equally breastfeeding. <laughs> okay, we're going to go on to that. Doctor mentioned earlier, auntie, um, well, they're trying to establish places or centers in our different workplaces for mothers to be able to breastfeed their children. <clears throat> but we've also seen um, mothers that uh, go work and they express the milk, keep it, and maybe in a fridge or wherever. And I believe many of them are doing that. So help us understand how effective it is and how is it supposed to be done? Because I believe there are a lot of things that uh, go along with that, hygiene and all that. And over. Um, there's some okay, gaps. Um, thank you. Um, express, expressing breast milk and storing it for the child's consumption is also actually breastfeeding. Oh. And uh, that comes about like you, po you portrayed in cases where the mothers cannot be with their babies but still need to breastfeed. Um, in a setting where they the, the paramount issue is hygiene. Hygiene, how do you clean the breast? It's advised that we use uh, cool boiled water, mm. boiled cold water, and not soap, because when you use soap, it might irritate the nipple and then cause a soaring of the nipple, mm -hmm. and that might cause infection of the breast. So you're supposed to get clean containers, okay? And then express after having washed your hand with soap and water 
and clean the breast with cold boiled water, you express the breast milk into a clean container. Okay. And this breast milk can stand for 24 hours under okay. room temperature. temperature. Mm. Okay. But for those who have the, the, the refrigerators, it can stand longer. Mm. It can stand for as long as five days to one week mm. in, the, in the fridge. If it's not in the freezer compartment, in the freezer compartment, it can go up to two weeks. Okay. And then if you have a deep freezer, you can even store it for a longer time. Some people have said six months to mm. about a year. Yes. But the key thing is hygiene. You have to clean and ensure Properly. that these utensils are cleaned well, mm. and you also have to clean your hands uh, well. Okay? That, and when it comes to, to um, feeding the baby, the same hygienic practices should be ensured. Okay? So the instructions, if you're the mother who has left the child with a care, a, a care take at home, Hmm. The key th emphasis should be placed on hygiene, 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 hygiene. Because if you touch that container with dirty hands, that ceases to be clean breast milk. The other thing is that I, I know uh, most of the mothers try to do bottle feeding. Hmm. Bottle feeding, but um, we can safely do the feeding using a spoon. Okay. or an open cup or container and you just hold it on the lower lip of the child, child. Mm. and the child will use the tongue to lick, lick it. it. Mm. It's safer than actually the bottle because there's a risk of contaminating the bottle while opening. While opening. So those are some of the ways they can do. And um, the consumption is varied. It depends on, on, on how much milk you're producing but also mm. How long you're likely to stay there? If you are at a close close by workplace, probably okay, you may not store too much. But if you have, uh, if you're far off, then you gauge with the time how much uh, your baby takes, and you can try to estimate. Yes. Thank you so much, doctor. <laughs> well, I think I time is running so fast, and I want to get into answering people's questions here online. Those that have ju just joined us, we're talking about the effectiveness of breastfeeding and why would the uh, World Health Organization call each one of us to stand up for breastfeeding? Is it that we had lost interest? No, not like, but we want to do this wake up call that breastfeeding is still very essential for our children. And well, starting with, uh, I think I'm going to just start with this uh, question someone is asking. Someone is asking, <laughs> well, let me just read it the way it is. Um, a mother conceived one month after delivery, mm -hmm. so she got a newborn following a 10 months old baby. Mm -hmm. Would it be wise to breastfeed both kids? <laughs> <laughs> Can I sit there? Well. Yes, a mother uh, conceived mm -hmm. one month after delivery, mm -hmm. she got a newborn. Yes, following ten a ten months old baby. So would it be wise to breastfeed both kids? Okay, um thank you very much. Um well um the fact is that ideally these interactions of birth preparedness and spacing should happen early on, right from Before. antenatal. Okay. Such as you discuss these things and plan out how to take care of your child and, uh, and thereafter when to have the next baby. But I, I accept sometimes it does happen and uh, the mother conceives um, in a shorter time than desired, okay? So normally the body produces substances we call hormones and they change, they determine the preparedness of this mother to feed, to hold and feed this baby. And these hormones change with the time. So we would encourage this mother to continue breastfeeding when she, if she conceives early on, mm. she continues breastfeeding. The hormonal changes naturally with this growing baby will reduce the breast milk production. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And with the time, once she will stop breastfeeding, um, because the milk will not be there, as the body prepares for this other oncoming baby. And um, ordinarily, by the time she gives birth to the other baby, mm -hmm. this baby would automatically have been wind of the the breast. Ten months. Yes, because um, by ten months, the body will have ceased producing milk because of the hormonal changes, and the child has to feed. So other substitute will have been brought in. Okay. okay. So, okay. Hmm. But of course, that is not a desired. Like I say, the desire is to breastfeed these children, these babies, up to two years of life, and therefore, a discussion okay. of the birth space, the, the, the family planning and the spacing mm. should come early on and should be maintained through. Okay? Yes, we said it has some advantage towards family planning, but sometimes it may not be absolute, especially if it's not done very well. Okay? And that may give birth to such scenarios. But the body will stop producing milk at some point in time, mm. and therefore the, this other child, the 10 month old, will get off the meal and then probably the body prepare for this oncoming baby. Baby. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, doctor, I think uh, um, Coach Mike was is the one that was asking this question. I think you've been answered. I just want to run to other other questions. Well, we've had so many people complain of Sina Mabede. Hmm? Yes. Or maybe the stereotypes around breastfeeding, Tibenali, okay. Yes, if you have been to wear it, if someone will be like, if you're being a girl, I don't want to get mm -hmm. this kind of weight. So, <laughs> doctor, just help us to uh, maybe uh, say something about that, about her complaining, and maybe naturally they just don't have the breast milk, or there are those that um, willingly refuse to okay. do what is required. Okay. Thank you very much. So, like we earlier said, if you don't establish this breastfeeding relationship early on, if you don't prepare the mother for breastfeeding, and if you don't ensure effective um, attachment and mm. positioning early on to establish that relationship, you're likely to fail. The breast might not form adequately. Okay. And of course, the child will, might refuse the breast. So usually it stems around that, and that's why we call on our colleagues, the midwives, the obstetricians, the pediatricians, mm. to ensure that this whole package is given to this mother. And mm. she's supported, the word is support. Supported. Mm. To initiate effective breastfeeding and maintain it. It is not a one-time thing. Early initiation and support through, okay? Because when you don't stimulate the breast, when the baby does not stimulate the, ba the breast through suckling, mm. there they are less hormones that are produced to make the milk. So the milk will not form if the, breast does, if the baby does not latch on the breast. The milk will not form if the breast doesn't? If the baby does not breastfeed okay. frequently and early. So it's not about what I eat and what, what I do not eat? Um, that comes secondarily because we want okay. the child to have um, a, a nutritious feed through the breast milk. We want the child to have vitamins, to have enough protein, to have carbohydrates, mm -hmm. and therefore that's why we encourage. And we also want the mother not to lack, not to be depleted. Mm -hmm. So we advise on the mother to have a balanced diet, to have adequate rest, and therefore produce breast, which is in good and sufficient. And for those who don't want to breastfeed, studies have also indicated that breastfeeding is protective against ca certain cancers. Cancers of the breast, okay. cancers of the ovaries, okay? So in addition to ensuring that the mother's uterus goes back to the normal size okay. prior to so. this pregnancy. 
Thank so you there are so all much. those advantages. <laughs> and there check. are many. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Atrabi. We still you are watching Google Day TV, and uh, I'm with Dr. Philip Cas uh, Cassidy, a pediatrician, yes, a specialist in that area. Well, today we're handling the topic of discussion, the effectiveness of breastfeeding. Well, as we want to add on a voice from the 1st to 7th of August, it was the breastfeeding month, and the theme was to step up for breastfeeding. I'm so grateful for the people that have raised concerns and our time is running so fast. I'm going to read them at once because some of them, they're a bit like um, relating okay. such that uh, uh, Dr. Philip can just help us do an overall Yes. So uh, this person is asking that um, how, how often does a baby need to be breastfed? Then uh, how long should each breastfed last? And then, um, can I breastfeed after a C-section? Then, uh, are there any reasons why I should not breastfeed? I think we talked about this. And some of um, uh, someone is asking then uh, the age limit for breastfeeding. Then uh, foods that increase the milk supply. And this one is asking what should I do for the linking breasts? The leaking breast. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for those questions and the interest in this subject. That is what we want. We want to drive awareness to the sky limit that all babies should ideally be breastfed on newborn babies. How often? On demand. The answer is on demand. Okay. Whereas we say eight to twelve times, but ideally, if you can go more than above that, that mm. would be the idea. For how long? When the, bre the baby uh, gets satisfied, you will see the baby uh, dropping off the breast. Mm. The baby suckles while looking at the mother, while looking at the mother's breast, calmly, and when the child is satisfied, normally the, the stomach come. usually, um, uh, you can see uh, the stomach is full, but also the child will go off the breast. Okay? And but the minimum, like we said, if you have these sleepy babies, should be at least every three hours. And then the age we talked about the age, the ideal is to push it up to two years of age. The Americans um, advocate for, um, I think it's about all the same or slightly longer than that. Mm. So, but two years of age would be optimal. Okay. That's what WHO, WHO advocates for. Okay. And then um, the contraindications, we mentioned them. Ideally, if the mother is on drugs that um, would potentially affect the child, like the cancer drugs, then you don't want this child to have effects, their effects. Mm -hmm. okay? Because some of these medicines are actually for adults um, in the adult population, and they ideally should not be given to the very young ones. So those few conditions should be discussed or arrived at through the interaction mm. with the obstetrician, the pediatrician, the midwife, the nurse, this health care team. work or team. In other words, we encourage a lot of interaction. If you want to breastfeed well and safely and have a good relationship, discuss all these things prior to conception, during antenatal care, in the immediate after birth and, and the period leading up to two years. Should have this constant dialogue, okay? To ensure that the child is really effectively breastfed. If there are any contraindications that come up, mm. these can be discussed with your doctor. But the ideal is those limited conditions where the, the mother is on strong drugs or that cannot permit. And what foods? Balance that. <laughs> okay. You balance that, you take uh, adequate uh, energy giving foods, uh, bodybuilding foods, those are the proteins, the fish, the liver, the eggs, the mm. wild milk, and all that. And then the vitamins, those that the protective foods, okay. the vitamins, the fruits. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And of course, adequate rest. And for the fathers out there, the mothers need a good psychosocial environment and support. Thank you. 
Okay. <laughs> I was thanking you for that point of <laughs> the yes. support and yes. you know stress is not yes. telling mothers yes. God. But well, um, Munangi, Google TV has so many programs. I just like you read it after this show. We have a lot of programs that um, you know uh, come up. The seasons and then the political podium. Munangi, biobu fuzi biobu beda o unge biobu la mu biobu beda o ne biobu fuzi biobu beda o bolis sawa. So at exactly 10 p.m. we shall be having the political podium by charity. So sigala angoli kugode TV. In just less than a minute, I'm going to be requesting Dr. Kasiria Thirpo to. Say goodbye to us and also maybe if he has a package to maybe to the mother or to the medics as well kubanga aj to anga we never gambi at him so me samunanga in so kuba gamba can some secati by health to a kabange be ba y no zibu. Thank you, madam um gift. To our viewers, breast is best for the baby. It was meant for the baby, for the survival of humanity. Okay? And there's this catch, one six to one. All newborns should be initiated on the breast within the first hour of life and supported throughout. And then exclusively breastfed for six months and up to two years of life. Okay? And breastfed up to two years of life. And the idea is to have a hundred percent of all mothers breastfeeding their babies. Of course there are some exceptions, but the healthcare team, be a good friend to this healthcare team. They should be able to identify those few incidences and discuss with you and ensure that your child is safe. Okay. Thank you so much and please carry on the message. Breast is best for the baby. Thank you. Thank you so much Doctor. Breast is best for the baby. Why not? I want to wish you the best of the night. I know, uh, you know, um, the year is just like running so fast, but I believe that whatsoever you prayed for for this particular year, God is just watching over you to make sure that it comes to it comes through yes so trust god and trust the process make sure you visit the hospital in case of anything or go and consult make use of the doctors yeah take your children there and consult well so till next wednesday i remain gifting a kainga every single wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m on the health show on google day tv good night <laughs>